I reconnected with my high school crush on Facebook, had an affair, and lost everything when he rejected me after my divorce. I've been married to Daniel, 38M, for six years now. Our relationship has never been great, to be honest. There's always been this underlying tension and lack of connection between us. I think part of it stems from the fact that I've always had feelings for someone else, my high school crush, Michael, 36M. I first met Michael when we were both 16. We were in the same biology class, and I remember the day he walked in like it was yesterday. He had these piercing green eyes and a crooked smile that made my heart skip a beat every time. I was immediately drawn to his easygoing nature and quick wit. We were paired up for a lab project, and I was so nervous I could barely speak coherently. Over time, Michael and I became good friends. We'd study together, hang out at the local diner after school, and go to football games on Friday nights. I cherished every moment we spent together, but I was too shy and insecure as a teenager to ever tell him how I felt. I always wondered if he might have felt the same way, but I never worked up the courage to find out. Throughout high school, I watched Michael date other girls, each time feeling a pang of jealousy and regret for not speaking up. I dated a bit too, but no one ever measured up to Michael in my mind. I kept hoping he'd realize we were meant to be together, but that moment never came. After high school graduation, Michael and I went our separate ways. He moved across the country for college, while I stayed local to help care for my sick grandmother. We tried to keep in touch at first, but gradually lost contact as we built our separate lives. I'd think about him from time to time, wondering what could have been if I'd been braver. I threw myself into my studies and my part-time job at a local bookstore. It was there that I met Daniel in my mid-twenties. He was a regular customer, always coming in to browse the history section. We started chatting, and he eventually asked me out. Daniel was stable, had a good job as an accountant, and seemed like husband material. My parents really liked him, especially after the string of not-so-great boyfriends I'd had in college. So even though I never felt that spark or passion with Daniel, I convinced myself it was enough. We dated for three years before getting married. The first few years of our marriage were okay. We settled into a comfortable routine, bought a small house in the suburbs, and talked about starting a family. But there was always something missing. Our conversations were surface level, our intimacy felt mechanical, and we spent more and more time in separate rooms doing our own things. I tried to ignore the growing sense of dissatisfaction, telling myself that this was just what adult relationships were like. That the butterflies and excitement of young love weren't sustainable in the long run. But deep down, I knew I was lying to myself. Fast forward to last year. I was mindlessly scrolling through Facebook one evening, procrastinating on some work I'd brought home, when a suggested friend popped up, it was Michael. My heart started racing as soon as I saw his profile picture. He looked even more handsome than I remembered, with a few distinguished gray hairs at his temples and laugh lines around his eyes. Without really thinking it through, I sent him a friend request. To my surprise, he accepted almost immediately. Within minutes, he sent me a message, Hey stranger. Long time no see. How have you been? As soon as we started messaging back and forth, all those old feelings came flooding back. It was like I was 16 again, getting butterflies every time I saw a message from him. We caught up on the basics, our careers, he was now a successful architect, our families, he had a younger brother who'd just gotten married, and our current lives. Michael told me he had recently gotten divorced and was starting over in a new city not far from where I live now. He said he'd married young to his college girlfriend, but they'd grown apart over the years. Part of me felt guilty for how excited I was about this news. We messaged constantly for about a week, catching up on the last 20 years. It felt so natural and effortless talking to him, in a way I had never experienced with Daniel. Michael remembered little details about our high school days that I'd long forgotten. He asked about my family, my dreams, my disappointments, all the deep, meaningful conversations I'd been craving. I found myself daydreaming about Michael and what could have been if we had gotten together as teenagers. I imagined a life filled with passion and laughter, where I felt truly seen and understood. These fantasies made my actual life with Daniel seem even more dull and unfulfilling in comparison. My best friend Lisa, 35F, quickly picked up on my sudden obsession with my phone and pressed me about what was going on. Lisa and I had been inseparable since middle school. She'd been there through all my teenage pining over Michael, my college dating disasters, and my courtship with Daniel. When I finally admitted it was Michael the first was talking to, she immediately knew how dangerous this situation was. Lisa warned me that I was playing with fire. She reminded me of how devastated I'd been when Michael left for college, and how long it had taken me to get over him. She pointed out that I was viewing Michael through rose-colored glasses, romanticizing our past and projecting my current dissatisfaction onto him. You're married, Jen, Lisa said firmly. 
Whatever issues you're having with Daniel, this isn't the way to handle them. You need to cut off contact with Michael before you do something you'll regret. I knew Lisa was right, even though it killed me to admit it. She threatened to tell Daniel if I didn't end things with Michael right away. With a heavy heart, I unfriended Michael and deleted our message thread. I sent him one last message explaining that I was married and couldn't continue our reconnection, then blocked his number. For weeks afterward, I felt devastated. I cried myself to sleep most nights, mourning the loss of Michael all over again. My relationship with Daniel felt even more strained and lifeless in comparison. I couldn't stop thinking about the what-ifs with Michael and wondering if I had made a huge mistake marrying Daniel. I tried to throw myself into my work and hobbies to distract myself. I started taking a pottery class, something I'd always wanted to try. But even as I shaped the clay, my mind would wander to Michael's hands and how they might feel shaping the clay alongside mine. Daniel noticed my mood change and asked if something was wrong. I brushed it off, saying I was just stressed about work. But the truth was, I felt like I was suffocating in our marriage. Every mundane conversation, every routine evening in front of the TV, every perfunctory kiss goodnight, it all felt like a pale imitation of the life I could have had. I'm not sure where to go from here. Part of me wants to reach out to Michael again, to see if there's still a chance for us. But I know that would be wrong. I made vows to Daniel, and even if our marriage isn't perfect, he doesn't deserve to be betrayed like that. At the same time, I don't know if I can continue in this passionless marriage with Daniel when I now know there could be something so much more intense out there. Am I terrible for having these thoughts? Should I try to make things work with Daniel or follow my heart? I feel so confused and conflicted about everything. I keep replaying my high school memories with Michael, wondering if I should have spoken up about my feelings back then. Would we have ended up together? Or would we have fizzled out like so many high school relationships do? I'll never know, and that uncertainty is eating away at me. For now, I'm trying to focus on improving my relationship with Daniel. I've suggested we try some new activities together, hiking, cooking classes, anything to shake up our routine. But it all feels forced, like I'm going through the motions without any real enthusiasm. I know I need to make a decision soon. Either recommit to my marriage and let go of these fantasies about Michael, or be honest with Daniel about my feelings and consider ending things. But I'm terrified of making the wrong choice and regretting it for the rest of my life. I feel like I'm standing at a crossroads, with two very different futures stretching out before me. One safe and familiar, the other thrilling but uncertain. I just wish I knew which path was the right one to take. Update 1, it's been about 8 months since my last post and so much has changed. I really wish I had listened to Lisa's warning, because everything has completely fallen apart. After cutting off contact with Michael initially, I tried to refocus on my marriage with Daniel. I suggested date nights, couples counseling, anything I could think of to try and rekindle some spark between us. We went to fancy restaurants, took a weekend trip to a nearby bed and breakfast, and even tried salsa dancing classes. But it all felt forced and hollow. During our couples counseling sessions, I found myself holding back, unable to fully express my doubts and dissatisfaction. I was afraid that if I was truly honest, it would mean the end of our marriage. So I went through the motions, nodding along as the therapist gave us communication exercises and homework assignments. As the weeks went by, I realized I had never truly been in love with Daniel, I had just settled for security and stability. I thought back to our courtship, how my parents had pushed me towards him because he was such a nice, stable man, I remembered feeling more relieved than excited when he proposed, grateful to have found someone who wanted to commit to me. Daniel, for his part, seemed to be trying. He brought me flowers occasionally, suggested we watch movies together instead of in separate rooms. But his efforts only highlighted how little he really knew me. The flowers were always lilies, which I'm allergic to. The movies he chose were action flicks that he knew I had no interest in. As the months went by, I grew more and more depressed and resentful. I started picking fights with Daniel over every little thing, leaving dishes in the sink, forgetting to buy milk, staying late at work. I was miserable at home and dreaded spending time with him. I threw myself into working extra shifts at my part-time retail job just to avoid being around him. I kept thinking about Michael, wondering what he was doing, if he ever thought about me. I'd find myself absent-mindedly doodling his name in my work notebook, then furiously scribbling it out. I knew it was childish, but I couldn't help it. Then one day about three months ago, I was working a closing shift at the store when I looked up and saw Michael walking in. My heart nearly stopped. He looked even more handsome in person than in his pictures. As soon as our eyes met, it was like electricity shot through my body. Michael came up to me and we started talking like no time had passed at all. He told me he had recently moved to town for a new job at an architectural firm. I found out he worked just down the street from my store. We ended up talking for over an hour after my shift ended, 
standing in the parking lot completely lost in conversation. He told me about his divorce, how he and his ex-wife had simply grown apart. They had married young, right out of college, and over time realized they wanted different things. It had been amicable, he said, but still painful. I found myself opening up to Michael about my own marital struggles. I told him how unfulfilled I felt, how I was beginning to think I had made a mistake in marrying Daniel. Michael listened with such understanding and empathy. He didn't judge me or try to offer solutions, he just let me talk. After that night, Michael and I started meeting up for coffee or lunch breaks whenever our schedules aligned. I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't help myself. Being around him made me feel alive in a way I hadn't experienced in years. We'd talk about everything and nothing, our hopes, our fears, our favorite books and movies. Michael remembered that I had always wanted to be a writer and encouraged me to start working on the novel idea I'd had brewing for years. He even offered to read my first few chapters when they were ready. About a month into our secret meetups, I finally worked up the courage to tell Michael how I felt about him. We were sitting in a quiet corner of a local park, watching the sunset. I told him about my high school crush, how I had always regretted not telling him how I felt back then. To my shock and delight, he admitted he had always had feelings for me too, even back in high school. He said he'd been too nervous to ask me out, afraid of ruining our friendship. One thing led to another, and we ended up kissing. It was the most passionate, intense moment of my life. That kiss opened the floodgates, and Michael and I began a full-blown affair. We would meet up in hotel rooms or at his apartment whenever we could steal a few hours away. The guilt ate away at me, but I justified it by telling myself I deserved to finally experience real love and passion. With Michael, I felt like my true self for the first time in years. We'd spend hours talking, laughing, making love. He encouraged my dreams in a way Daniel never had. When I told him about my desire to quit my retail job and focus on writing full-time, he was fully supportive. He even offered to help me create a budget to make it work. This went on in secret for about two months before everything blew up. Daniel grew suspicious of my constant work emergencies and late nights out. I had become careless, leaving receipts from restaurants Michael and had visited in my pockets. I changed the password on my phone, which only made Daniel more suspicious. One night, while I was in the shower, Daniel went through my phone. He found all the messages between Michael and me, including some rather explicit photos we had exchanged. When I got out of the shower, Daniel was sitting on the bed, my phone in his hand, looking shell-shocked. He confronted me the next morning and I broke down and confessed everything. I told him about my history with Michael, our reconnection, and the affair. Daniel was furious and devastated. He called me every name in the book, saying he couldn't believe I would betray him like this. In that moment, seeing the pain and anger on Daniel's face, the full weight of what I had done hit me. I had betrayed a good man who, despite our issues, had always been faithful and committed to me. I begged Daniel for forgiveness, saying we could go to counseling, that I would cut off all contact with Michael. But Daniel wasn't having it. He told me to get out, that he couldn't even look at me. He said he would be contacting a divorce lawyer and that I should do the same. He kicked me out of the house that same day, telling me to go to the man I really wanted to be with. With nowhere else to go, I went straight to Michael's place, thinking we could finally be together openly. I showed up at his door in tears, a hastily packed suitcase in hand. I told him everything that had happened with Daniel, saying that now we could be together without any obstacles. But when I finished talking, Michael completely blindsided me. He said he had fun with our fling, but he wasn't looking for anything serious or long-term. He made it clear he had no interest in a real relationship or commitment with me. He said he was sorry things had blown up with Daniel, but that wasn't his problem. I was absolutely shattered. I had blown up my entire life for Michael, and he didn't even want me. The fantasy I had built up in my head came crashing down around me. I realized Michael wasn't the same person I had fallen for as a teenager. He had changed, and not for the better. Now I'm left with nothing but regrets. I cheated on a good man who loved me, even if we weren't passionately in love. I threw away my marriage and stability for a selfish fling. Daniel has already filed for divorce and I don't blame him one bit. I'm staying on my sister's couch for now, but I have no idea what I'm going to do long term. My friends and family are furious with me for cheating. I've lost all respect from everyone in my life. I feel like such an idiot for thinking I could recapture some magical teenage romance. I wish I could go back and undo everything, but it's far too late for that now. Update 2 It's been about three months since my world imploded, and things have only gotten worse. I've tried reaching out to Daniel multiple times to apologize and see if there's any chance of reconciliation, but he won't even speak to me. I've left voicemails, sent emails, even tried writing him a letter, but there's been nothing but silence in return. 
I don't really blame him, but it still hurts to be completely shut out. I'm still staying with my sister, but the atmosphere is tense. She's made it clear this is only a temporary arrangement until I can get back on my feet. I can tell she's disappointed in me and thinks I'm pathetic for throwing my life away over Michael. She makes little comments about how I need to grow up and face reality. It's hard not to feel like a failure when your own family can barely stand to be around you. I've been working extra shifts at the retail store trying to save up money for my own place, but it's slow going. The divorce is moving forward and Daniel is pushing for a quick, clean break. His lawyer has made it clear he wants me to get as little as possible in the settlement. Given that I'm the one who cheated, I don't have much leverage to argue for more. The worst part is, I found out through mutual friends that Daniel has apparently started seeing someone new already. Apparently it's a woman named Rachel, 34F, who he knew back in college. She recently moved to town as a single mom and they reconnected. From what I hear, they've been spending a lot of time together and seem really happy. They've been spotted at local restaurants, farmers markets, and even a concert in the park. It kills me to think of Daniel moving on so quickly while I'm still a complete mess. I can't help but wonder if there was something between them even before our marriage fell apart. I've tried to distract myself by throwing myself into my work and starting to write that novel I always talked about. But it's hard to focus when my life is in such disarray. Every time I sit down to write, I end up staring at a blank page, my mind swirling with regrets and what-ifs. I've hit rock bottom emotionally. I cry myself to sleep most nights, overwhelmed with regret and self-loathing. I've lost my husband, my home, my dignity, and the respect of everyone I care about. And for what? A few months of excitement with Michael that turned out to be completely meaningless. I know I have no right to feel sorry for myself since this is all my own doing. But I can't help feeling like the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Yes, I made a horrible mistake. But do I really deserve to lose everything while Daniel gets to start fresh with someone new? I've thought about reaching out to Michael again, just to talk things through and get some closure. But I know that would be a mistake. He's made it clear he wants nothing to do with me, and reopening that wound would only lead to more pain. I've considered moving to a new city and starting over completely. Maybe a fresh start is what I need. But the thought of leaving behind everything and everyone I know is terrifying. Plus, I'm not sure I trust myself to make good decisions right now. I'm trying to focus on rebuilding my life one day at a time. I've started seeing a therapist, trying to work through my issues and understand why I made the choices I did. It's painful and uncomfortable, but I know it's necessary if I ever want to move forward. I'm also trying to repair my relationships with friends and family. I've reached out to old friends I've neglected, offering sincere apologies for my behavior. Some have been receptive, others not so much. But it feels good to at least try to make amends. But it's hard not to feel hopeless when I see how badly I've screwed everything up. I'm not sure I'll ever forgive myself for being so foolish and selfish. The road ahead seems long and difficult, and there are days when I'm not sure I have the strength to keep going. For now, I'm just taking it one day at a time. Trying to be a better person, to learn from my mistakes, and to find some way to move forward. I hope that someday I can look back on this as a painful but necessary learning experience. But right now, it just feels like an endless nightmare of my own making. Update 3, it's been about 6 weeks since my last update, and I've hit a new low I never thought possible. I finally scraped together enough money to rent a tiny studio apartment. It's in a pretty rough part of town, but it was all I could afford. At least I'm not imposing on my sister anymore. The apartment is bare bones, just a twin bed, a small table with two chairs, and a tiny kitchenette. The walls are thin, and I can hear my neighbors arguing at all hours of the night. But it's mine, and that's something, I suppose. The divorce was finalized last week. Daniel got the house and most of our shared assets. I didn't even bother fighting it, I knew I didn't deserve anything after what I did. It's still stung to sign those papers and make it official that my marriage was over. But the real bombshell came a few days ago. I ran into a mutual friend at the grocery store who let slip that Daniel and Rachel are engaged. Apparently he proposed on a weekend getaway, just days after our divorce was finalized. I was floored. Finding out Daniel had moved on so quickly sent me into a tailspin. In a moment of weakness, I drove by our old house late one night. I saw Rachel's car in the driveway and lights on inside. It was like a knife to the heart imagining her living the life that was supposed to be mine. I'm ashamed to admit this, but I completely lost it. I ended up egging the house and keying Rachel's car before speeding away. It was childish and petty, I know. But in that moment, all the hurt and anger just poured out of me. Of course, Daniel knew it was me right away. He showed up at my apartment the next day, angrier than I've ever seen him. He said if I ever came near him or Rachel again, he'd get a restraining order. He also threatened to press charges for the property damage if I didn't pay for repairs immediately. 
I'm such an idiot. Not only have I torpedoed any slim chance of ever reconciling with Daniel, but now I'm in legal trouble too. I emptied what was left of my savings to pay for the car repairs. I'm behind on rent and utilities now as a result. To top it all off, I got fired from my retail job yesterday. My boss said my performance has tanked and I've been unreliable lately. She's not wrong, I've been a complete mess. So here I am, unemployed, nearly broke, freshly divorced, and more alone than ever. I've alienated pretty much everyone in my life at this point. I keep replaying all my mistakes over and over, wishing I could go back and make different choices. But I know that's impossible. I'm not sure where to go from here or how to even begin putting my life back together. Some days I can barely find the energy to get out of bed. I know I brought this all on myself, but that doesn't make it hurt at me less. I just hope someday I forgive myself and find a way forward. For now, I'm taking it one day at a time and trying to hold on to any shred of hope I can find.